Hey, this is Ben Farmer from Atlanta, Georgia, and this video is for the week two assignment in Loudon Stern's Introduction to Music Production class. I'm going to show the options available when setting up a new session in Pro Tools 11 and explain the settings that work best for me. Using and understanding these settings and concepts to set up your recording sessions properly from the start can save you lots of frustration down the road. When I open up Pro Tools, in the quick start min window, I'm going to select a create blank session and then click on the session parameters to look at the options for this new session. The first option is the audio file type. Uh, both of these are good options. They're both lossless type files, but broadcast wave has more metadata, which is useful if the file crashes. To the right of that is the sampling rate, or how often the sound wave gets measured when audio is converted into binary information. The higher the sampling rate, the higher the frequency that can be represented. The audio CD standard for this is 44.1 kilohertz, uh, which is way more than the human ear can perceive. However, there's a common sampling rate standard for video that is slightly higher at 48 kilohertz. I recommend this setting for ease of use with video in the future, even if you don't have that intention when starting your project. It's just good to have the option. Next, we see bit depth, or the word length of ones and zeros that the computer uses to represent our audio. The CD audio standard here is 16-bit, but I recommend using 24-bit because it captures a wider dynamic range and the audio will be, will be less likely to distort if the performance gets loud. Uh, you can see in this way how there's a relationship between bit depth and amplitude or volume. Uh, to the right of that is a menu to adjust what hardware or interface you're using with Pro Tools. Selecting last used here will uh, assure that Pro Tools is ready to communicate with my inbox, which I already have turned on. Finally, I'll check this box that says interleaves so that Pro Tools will treat the left and right sides of this track as the same file. So I hit OK, and Pro Tools asked me to name and save the session. This is an important step that you don't want to gloss over because all the files you record will be named and related to this session. So make sure to give your project a name you'll be able to remember and reference. I'm going to call this uh, Music Production Track. Uh, and you, you'll see that Pro Tools also asks where to save the file, and I also suggest you set up a specific folder called like Pro Tools Sessions, where you will initially save all of your files. Finally, after you've saved, it's time to make sure that the buffer size is low enough to record without experiencing bad latency. Under the Setup tab, choose the Playback Engine window. Uh, here you can adjust the hardware buffer size. It's a good idea to set this low while recording and then you can raise it while mixing and editing to get more power for your plugins. Setting your buffer size to 128 samples is a good starting point for recording, although this won't get rid of latency completely, it will keep it to a minimum. Alright, we're ready to add a track and start recording. I hope this video is helpful for you in understanding the basics of getting your Pro Tools session set up properly and will help make the process of recording smoother and easier for you. Thanks!